So, let's, let's open in prayer, because we'll go ahead and get started then. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Amen. Thank, you, Lord. thank you, Father, for the rain. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you take care of us. You provide for us. Yes. You, you bring the rain at the, at the appropriate time for our harvest, Amen. so that it can be plentiful, and that we can reap a harvest from you, Father thank God. You, so Jesus. We thank you for that. We thank you that you... Love us. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna get into your word, Lord, and we wanna accept more of your love, accept more of your your word tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so you're gonna get this morning what I have been studying the last couple of months, and Chris knows a lot about it. And that I've been studying the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And I, I think I even spoke a little bit about that on Sunday a couple of months ago, however long that was. Um, but this will be a little bit different than that in that because there's been a progression. And I love how God just reveals things to you when you spend time with his word, in his word. Mm-hmm. And actually the Bible even says that more will be given to you when you're, when you're taking his word. So I feel sorry for the, those that don't spend time in the word because... The Bible says that even what you have will be taken away. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a sad existence if you have God's word taken away from you. Um, because it's way too good to be to leave, me, to leave it alone. So the thing that we're going to talk about is the kingdom of God. And I've mentioned it before. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, those things can be used interchangeably. Matthew used them interchangeably. The other uh, gospels primarily used kingdom of God when they described it. We're going to be focusing in Matthew... Uh, tonight and talking about basically just what Jesus talked about. And I, I'm, I'm hopeful that some of your ideas of what the kingdom of God is should change or, or you should be thinking differently about it. Uh, you know, the kingdom of God, Jesus talked more about it than he did anything else. Nothing else he talked about more than the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, some other preachers will say money or they'll say, you know, hell or things like that, but it's, it's not true. The kingdom of God is what he talked about the most. And if you can search your memory banks, you'll, you'll remember that Jesus said that in how many parables, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. And so we're going to touch on some of those things today and, uh, or tonight. And uh, so we're going to start where Jesus started. And that is Jesus went uh, to be baptized by John the Baptist. And we also know that John the Baptist preached that very thing. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus went to get baptized by John the Baptist. And then Jesus was led up into the wilderness, came back down. And then this is what the Bible says about him shortly after that in verse 17. What chapter? chapter four. four, excuse me. You guys don't know? <laughs> four, four, how you doing? 417. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I want us to think for a second, what does the kingdom of heaven mean to you? And we can have a little bit of interaction. Like if, if you were going to explain what the kingdom of heaven is, is to somebody that doesn't know, how would you describe it? How would you explain it? It's so important. Jesus talked about it the most, so we need to have an idea of what it is. Remember, he said, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means the kingdom of heaven is here. It's, it's almost here. It's like within grasp, okay? Um, so how would we explain it? Anybody, feel free. Don't all speak at once. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is, I develop my faith and my faith muscle and my relationship with God. You know, I can say that the kingdom inside of me is is like heaven when I can actually hear the voice of God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. That, to me, is like good. heaven. Good. Good. That's good. You know, you, you would be, well, I, I don't think you would be surprised, but a lot of Christians have a hard time being able to explain what it is. Because so many Christians are confused that, okay, well, they think that Jesus is talking about heaven. And as you go through the scriptures, you'll see that he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about 
born essentially again. living a heaven here on earth right. is what or what ju- exactly what Susan said God in us yeah. you know because remember I've, I've defined it before the kingdom of heaven is uh, king's dominion of heaven right so or the king's reign of heaven so or the kingdom of God is the same thing so it's it is God reigning but as we can see uh, through the word, that number one, the disciples had a, an idea of what that meant. And it wasn't the same as what Jesus was trying to tell them it meant. And they didn't get it till later. And so we can even see that it's true in a lot of Christians now to where they will read that and they will think, oh, well, that has to do with heaven, where God is. But as we're going to look through some of it today, uh, tonight, we're going to see that Jesus is talking specifically about you, you having heaven here on earth. Okay? Uh, another area that we can think about is how did Jesus teach his disciples to pray? Yeah. Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, come on earth. Thy kingdom come. come. Yeah. His earth. kingdom yeah. come on earth. Now, I have, a, I have a thought for you, those of you that are are well averse in the in the word could God's kingdom have ever come had Jesus not taught his disciples to ask for that that's a good one The kingdom of God is in your midst. Is it in your midst? Yes. Or is it inside of you? Uh, it's inside, inside of you, you? Around you? Around you. Yeah. Okay. Everything you touch, it's everything it's you those do. things. Amen. I want to go to... Where did I write that down? I was going to skip ahead, I guess. Okay. Turn to Matthew 9. Everybody about the, I just love the way that pages sound when you're... So I hope you guys start bringing your Bibles. I just don't like the digital oh, noise. <laughs> it just doesn't make noise. Like the, that paper thin turning. It's just there's nothing like it. Read with me Matthew 9 and verse 30. Seven. Now, this is where Jesus had compassion on the crowd because, well, we can skip up to 34. We'll jump up to 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Now, I want to point something out to you guys, because your guys' prayers, Jesus tells us how to pray. He prayed for the kingdom to come. And then right here, he tells his disciples how to pray. And then right after that, he answers their prayer. Okay? Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Now, I'm willing to say that Jesus couldn't send the laborers out until he asked them to pray. Because Jesus said that he only did what the Father told him to do. Mm-hmm. Correct? So look at the next verse in chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits and cast them out. And, it, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. And then he sends them out. It gives them instructions on how to, how to do it through all of chapter 10. But Jesus told his disciples, so right now we have two instances where Jesus tells his disciples how to pray, okay? And then the prayer gets answered. Pretty much immediately with the, him sending the 12 out, according to the verse structure here, right? So Jesus cares about us praying for the kingdom. He cares about us praying and getting or we should be expecting results from those prayers, okay? Uh, turn with me to Mark chapter 9 in verse 1. I said we're primarily going to stay in Matthew, which we will. But just flip over there real quick. 
9-1. Now this is Jesus talking in future tense, okay? And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there may be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. What is Jesus talking about right here? In terms of power? In terms of just, this, just in, in all of it. In terms of why would Jesus mention something like this? He said it for a reason. We know that. I wrote in here, uh, I'm at the Passion, who won't experience death, and then I wrote to self. Okay. So. Could they experience death to self? Yeah. Without, without God's kingdom coming? No. They couldn't? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All I know is Jesus, Jesus did die. Yeah. And that, uh, so what do we know? Okay, let, let's, let's look at this a little bit closer now. So Jesus said they won't experience, some of them will not experience death. So that means they won't die until they see the kingdom of God come with power. Now, what do we know came with the power? Holy, the, Holy Spirit. Spirit. the Holy Spirit came with power. So some of them in that group were not going to die until they see the Holy Spirit come. Can we relate the two at the same, being the same thing? The kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit coming. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah. I would think that we could. There might be some in the group that did. <laughs> we don't know that. But he said some of them would not die until then. Now, question. Did or was the Holy Spirit coming? Or let me, let me back up. The kingdom of God. Was that in the mighty rushing wind? Sure. I believe. So. Holy Spirit, yeah. Are we sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that in the tongues of fire? Yes. Was it, huh? Was it in them speaking in tongues? Yes. Okay. I'll let you answer that. Turn with me. Chapter, or excuse me, Luke 17. And then we'll go back to Matthew after this. Luke 17. And verse 20. Ready? Everybody there? Mm -hmm. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So, let me ask it again. Is the kingdom of God in the mighty rushing wind? Could be. It shouldn't be. Not because that was that well, something they heard. I think it's. That's how it came. That's how it came. Yeah, that's how it came. But okay, let me let me let me phrase it this way. I'm not. I don't want to get caught up on the semantics of it all. I, I want to have fun with this. Okay. I think that the holy when the Holy Spirit came inside of their hearts, that was when the kingdom of God took place. Right. It wasn't in the mighty rushing wind. It wasn't. Now some people do speak in tongues when they get filled in their heart. Mm -hmm. But is that, can we, can we be specific and say, was it in the mighty rushing wind? Or was that something that came before it? And then when he came in their heart. I think it came before it. Well, if we look at what Jesus said here, it's not going to come with observation. Verse 20, let me read it in the Amplified. The kingdom of God does not come with signs to be observed or with visible display. The wind is invisible. <laughs> but is it, is it a visible display? But you, can you can see the effects of the wind. Yeah. You can't see the wind. But yeah, but wind blows here and there. You don't know which way it's going. Sure. But I think, I think they're just setting the stage of the event of the Holy Spirit. Sure. But if we were to break it down, what do we think specifically it was? It was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit the Holy coming Spirit. in. If Jesus just says it right here, that it is within you. 
Let me read the Amplified, verse 21. Nor will people say, look, here it is, or see, it is there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. Right, a tree falls in the forest. Does it make noise, right? Nobody's there to hear it. If the kingdom of God is not present, then the tree falling is insignificant. Or can the Holy Spirit come in without making noise? Yes. Yeah. Sure. So, it's for you guys to answer. I'm not trying to give you the right answer or not. I'm just trying to get you to think. Because I, I, this, this stuff to me is fun. Mm -hmm. This stuff, Reading God's word and looking at it a different way is <clears throat> what causes me to get in and seek out more. Mm -hmm. And try to find out more and more about what his word says. You know, Jesus even talked about the kingdom of God... When he wasn't talking about the kingdom of God. I want to look at, I, I, excuse me, I, or no, let's go to Matthew chapter 9 in verse 14. Like I said, we're just having a little bit of fun. I'm laying a little bit of a foundation and then it's, I'm going to really crank it up, okay? 14? Matthew 9, 14. Okay, so this is where John the Baptist group comes up and asks Jesus, why don't your guys fast? But I want you to think about the kingdom of God for a second and when it happened or how it happened. Verse 14, then came he or him, uh, or excuse me, then came to him the disciples of John saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. I was thinking about how many feel like eating after they have their mourning. Like if you're mourning the loss of someone, you mm -hmm. really don't feel like eating, do you? Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Verse 16. No man putteth a piece of new cloth. This is where it kind of changes. And you're like, why did Jesus start talking about this instead of talking about fasting? No man putteth a piece of new cloth into an old garment. For that which is put into, fill up, fill it up, taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Do you think Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God? What happened when the Holy Spirit came? He came inside of them. They couldn't receive. It was physically impossible because their sins were too great for them to be able to receive the Holy Spirit before Jesus died. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is talking about right here. He's talking about you can't put new wine into old wineskins. Right. These disciples need to be made new so that the Holy Ghost can come inside of them and make them give them something new so otherwise they, jesus is saying that they would explode if the holy ghost came inside of them if they have not their sins had not been taken away right 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 so, so is jesus right. is technically talking about the kingdom of god when he's not clearly talking about the kingdom of god isn't he because right. we've established that the kingdom of god is the holy ghost being inside of you isn't it? right, right, right. Okay? so put away the old man well, he's, he's new man. That's that's what that's what we do when we accept Jesus, isn't right. it? Mm -hmm. We we put that that old away. Mm -hmm. Now, we're gonna stay right here in Matthew. No, we already we already did that. So let's let's move ahead. Matthew eleven, verse eleven. Now I've always liked this one because this one seems rather strange too. 11, 11. Everybody there? Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So he's saying that John the Baptist is pretty great, isn't he? Mm -hmm. There hasn't been anybody greater than this guy. Not even Moses. Not even anyone. Isn't that what he's saying? Yeah. Hasn't been anyone greater. <laughs> Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. 
and verse 12 and from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violent take it by force and what does that mean that means the uh, jewish leaders i believe that's the jewish leaders trying to force god on is that a bad thing is jesus saying it's a bad thing let me read it out of the Amplified. Maybe it will bring a little bit more clarity. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assaults. And the violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. Does that sound like such a bad thing? Uh, yeah. No. <coughs> it no, to me it doesn't sound like a bad thing. It, it, to me it sounds like those that wanted a piece of the kingdom of heaven had to really fight for it. Mm. They had to go after it so hard, the prophets, the kings, they had to fight so hard for just a piece of it. And <coughs> Jesus, Jesus is saying it's easier now. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? Oh, yeah. That, that's why violent men have to take it by force is because they've been trying to get it. They've been trying to get the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Anyone that wanted it, they had to really fight for it. In some cases, they had to earn it, right? The high priest had to do certain things right. in order to be in the presence of God. They had to follow a strict procedure. So that's why Jesus was saying it, it's violent men. They had to be aggressive with going to get it. I know when we use some of those words, it comes across as a negative connotation, but I, I don't think it was that negative. I think it was more of a Jesus is trying to demonstrate it was extremely hard for them to experience the kingdom of heaven. It would be interesting to see what the word for violence is and to see if there's maybe not a better word, but that we can get a better understanding of what that means. That is possible. Because violence I could do that if you want me to look it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it is, it is a, it's a forceful. Yes. It's forceful. They, it's they, intense. They want it. There's nothing easy about it. <laughs> yeah. You gotta remember, they weren't born again, and we are born again, mm -hmm. right. and that's that's the. Uh, the passion says the passionate people have taken hold of its power. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. ones with zeal. The ones that yeah. really wanted yeah. it yeah. could get it. They could accomplish right. it, but it was not for the faint of heart. Right. You had to work hard. Now it's a lot. E Jesus made it a ton easier for us to experience the kingdom of heaven, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, I mean. We look at some of the, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to point out something. We look at some of the scripture and we think, what the heck does that mean? Yeah. I'm just trying to bring a little clarity to what it means. Because mm -hmm. I don't want you, when you see the kingdom of heaven, I don't want you to be afraid of that for one. Yeah. I don't want you to be looking forward to being with God in when the role is called up yonder. <laughs> I don't want, that's not it. Mm -hmm. It is experiencing God here and now. Yeah. It is a different lifestyle here and now. Matthew 13. Now this chapter, if you look through it, Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven ten times in one chapter. Think it's important? The first time he mentions it is when he starts, just before he starts to explain the parable of the sower. To the disciples in verse 11 he said he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know this is the first time he calls it the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given so jesus calls it the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and i can we can go into this we can read it but i'm we can't for this sake of time uh but we can go ahead and skip down a little bit and read another one he mentions it again in verse 19 i'll just point it out when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, okay, word of the kingdom, mm -hmm. all right, next one, yep, 24, another parable he set forth before them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like. A man who sowed good seed. We won't go into that right now. But we'll go into more. Let's, let's see some more of what Jesus said here. Verse 31. 
Another story, by way of comparison, he set forth before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Verse 33, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. Verse 38, the field is the word. The good seed means the children of the kingdom. Verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like something precious buried in a field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a dealer in search of fine and precious pearls. Verse 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet, which was cast into the sea and gathered in fish of every sort. Verse 52, there it is again. Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. He says it a lot just in this one little chapter. And he continues. And so we're going to continue. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep going. We're going to, this is where we wanted to get. Chapter 18. The kingdom of heaven was so important. Remember, the disciples even fought over who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom. Mm hmm Remember, a couple of their moms went up to Jesus and said, you can sit at your right. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the kingdom of heaven was important to them. It was sure. absolutely important. But their perception was what? Do we, know, do we know what their perception of the kingdom of heaven was? That he was going to have an earthly kingdom. Yes, that he was going to be taken to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He was going to be restored and put as king. And they were going to be at peace with the world. And he was going to rule and reign as the king of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they thought. So their ideas of Jesus, kingdom of heaven, coming to pass, well, to be honest about it, their mind was a little blocked at the time. They could only see what they wanted to see. Now, all of this stuff was brought to their remembrance, obviously, but they had a very specific task at hand. I mean, that's why... Judas did what he did. He was trying to get him to do mm -hmm. what he... And then, remember, there was, there was another one. Remember when Peter got rebuked? I've talked about that one before. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. trying to get the Pharisees to ask him for a sign, and the Pharisees did. And Jesus said, I'm not giving you a sign. And then, remember, Jesus rebuked mm -hmm. Peter later on. Get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know the plans of God. That's what Jesus told him. All right, verse 18, or chapter 18, verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as, a little, as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now what do we know about little children? Innocent. Innocent? Believe. Okay. You believe what they're told. Exactly. Exactly. They are, maybe, maybe not my kids as much as I'd like them to be, but they, are, they do what you tell them to do. Mm -hmm. Kids, when they are told, you got, you got to do this because this is you, mm -hmm. or there's going to be consequences, a child normally does it, right? right? I mean, there are obviously exceptions, which same thing with us. But a child is humble in the respect of they do what their parents tell them to do. Okay? That's what Jesus is obviously trying to get here, but we're going to keep reading. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, man, don't do that. Don't turn them away. Which believeth in me is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Not good results for that guy. Uh, woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot. What are we still talking about? Kingdom. Kingdom of heaven, right? We're still talking about that. Jesus is still talking about the same thing right here. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into, and I have this little word underlined, life. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking about your life. 
for thee to enter into life, halt or maim. So is he talking about here, your life here and now? Or is he talking about heaven? He's talking about right now. Is he talking about right here and now? All right, let's keep reading. Halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So is he talking about hell? Mm-hmm. No. Read verse, the... read verse 9. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Now, I have always found these verses hard to grasp. And the reason for that is, if my understanding is such that Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God here on earth, why would he jump to hell? Because life on earth is hell for some people. Okay. You know, without, without the Holy Spirit, without being born again, have that kingdom living. Blessed are you, Chris, for somebody told you this. <laughs> so, be that be born again, you have the rewards of the kingdom here. That's right. Okay. You don't have to deal with hell. Like people say, oh man, that was hell I went through. Okay, so I struggled with this. Had a really hard time, and you're right. I did teach it last Sunday right. morning. I talked about this. Let me read the, the verse 8 and verse 9 out of the Amplified. And if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble and sin, cut it off and throw it away from you. It is better, more profitable and wholesome for you to enter life maimed. So he's talking about your life maimed and lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble and sin, pluck it out and throw it away from you. It is better, more profitable and wholesome for you to enter life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the hell, Gehenna, the fire. So... When I read that, I thought, what the heck does that mean? Mm-hmm. So I chose to look it up. The word hell in this, uh, in this verse means Gehenna. That's the Greek word for what is, what, excuse me, what Matthew wrote. Okay, so Gehenna. All right, so hence I went and had an opportunity to look up what Gehenna means. Now I'm going to read with you what Gehenna means. Literally means, I memorized it, but it's easier for me to read. Valley of Hinnom. This is, might change your perception of if Jesus is talking about hell or not. Okay? Some of your versions might have said Hades. Did some say Hades instead of hell? When it says hell. What's Gehenna? Gehenna? Okay. All right, let me read this. Literally means Valley of Hinnom. Referring to a valley just outside of Jerusalem in Bible times. The city residents used this valley as a garbage dump. They kept a fire constantly burning there to destroy refuse. What Jesus is saying is that the Gehenna is, he's not talking about hell. He's talking about Gehenna. Gehenna is a place that they put their trash and it was continually on fire. And it is to represent a life that would be torment fire, all the things that you don't want. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is still talking about the kingdom of heaven being earth, heaven on earth, he's also talking about hell on earth. Mm -hmm. So basically being offended by everything could cause you to create your own hell here on earth by not being tolerant of others? Of what Jesus said, not tolerant of others. has nothing to do with tolerant of others. has everything to do with what Jesus said. Because what he's talking about in the offense right there, he's talking about offense of his words, offense of what he says. Okay? Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Guys, that word Gehenna is in, the new, is in the Gospels 12 times. And how many times have I looked at when that word Hades or hell is in there and I thought it meant the lake of fire? It's a different lake of fire in Revelation is a totally different Greek word than Gehenna. Hades is a totally different word from Gehenna. They are different Greek words. So hopefully this should bring a little bit of clarity. Let's read it again with the understanding that Jesus is talking about hell on earth. 
Okay? Verse 8. And if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble in sin, cut it off and throw it away from you. It is better, more profitable and wholesome for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into everlasting fire. Remember what Gan is? Mm -hmm. It's a fire that they continually kept mm -hmm. lit. Okay? Verse 9. And if your eye causes you to stumble and sin, pluck it out and throw it away from you. It is better, more profitable and wholesome for you to enter life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the hell, Gehenna, of fire. Enter, so you are entering into something here on this earth, whether you know it or not, aren't you? Whether you are consciously accepting Jesus as your Savior, you're accepting the kingdom of heaven, you're accepting that. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you choose to walk in it, that's one thing, because you've got to listen to the Holy Spirit when you do. Or you're choosing a life filled with hell. That's why it's so easy to understand that, man, some people that are so rich, they have such a hell of a life. Yeah, they do. There are some people that are so poor, they have such a hell of a life. There's some people that are middle class and they just have a crappy life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. It's because of this right here, what Jesus was talking about. This is hell on earth that Jesus is talking about. And Jesus wants us to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Remember what some of the other previous parables Jesus talked about? Man, it's like a treasure. You go, you go and bury it in the field. You go and sell all that you have and buy that piece of property. Just so that you can have that treasure. It is supposed to be more important to you. So we think about the Holy Spirit speaking to me. That is supposed to be more important to me than doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Listening to him is such a precious commodity. Mm -hmm. So precious mm -hmm. that I know I don't put enough value on it that I should. Mm -hmm. Man, if we think about all the things that his, you know, his job requirement. He's, it's his job to teach you all things. It's his job to, to guide you into all truth. It's his job to bring things to your remembrance, which I've said to you. Mm -hmm. It's his job to show you things to come. Mm -hmm. Those things are so massively huge. That's John, John 14 and 16. Mm -hmm. Those things are so important. It kind of puts a whole new value on if I understand that if I'm living in the kingdom of heaven, it's my job to listen to the Holy Spirit. It's his job to do his part and tell me those things. I will be experiencing the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Right. And if I don't, I'm going to be experiencing Gehenna. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm taking my life in my own hands when I don't do what he tells me to do. Right? That's what life was like before I came to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? Honestly, I think for some, yes. <laughs> even with some people being Christians, they don't have an understanding of what the kingdom of heaven is and how they should be. Because they're looking forward to being with God in heaven, mm -hmm. yeah. they don't take into consideration all the things that they should be doing here on earth. Right. Living with Jesus and doing the things that he tells us to do that will change our behavior and allow us to experience life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, man, it should change everything we understand about what the kingdom of heaven is. Yeah, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yeah. So those commandments are kingdom living. Man, I only have five minutes left. <laughs> Gotta skip ahead now. So, <laughs> right? so we understand that the kingdom of heaven is not the life after, right? Because yes. eternal life starts as soon as you accept Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, if we have that understanding, we can enter into the kingdom of heaven living. We can do what Jesus is, man, he's tugging on us to do. And man, it's expedient that I go to the Father so that he's going to come inside of you. Yeah. Just can't help myself. Chapter 18. Let's go to one more. Verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought to him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, I don't know if you guys know how much a talent is. 
some headings, some of you might have a little heading in there that says how much it is. What does yours say? About 300 metric tons of silver. Okay. Doesn't really give you a dollar amount, does it? No. Okay. Mine says uh, 10,000 bags of gold. Okay. Still, still doesn't really give us a concept of how much money it is. You know, how much a... It one billion dollars. Okay. Great. <laughs> now, does it really? <laughs> Did you just make that up? Make that up? Okay, let me do the math for you. <laughs> do you know how much a laborer made at that time? No. Not very much. Right? 16 cents a day. Oh, Whoa. A talent was considered to be... Not too talented. A, no. A talent <laughs> was considered to be a laborer's lifetime of wages. Oh. Wow. How many How many talents did he just say? 10,000 10, lifetimes. 10,000 lifetimes is what this guy owed. Hmm. He's in trouble. Pretty much un, un, unpayable back, right? Yeah. For so much that he had not to pay, <laughs> clearly, his, command, or, uh, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I pay or I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. Anybody say what, how much that was? Mine says a hundred silver coins. hundred silver coins? Yeah, a hundred silver coins. Okay. Uh, one translation said about 20 bucks. Another one said a few dollars. 20,000 20, here. How much? 20,000. That's what yours says? $20,000? Yeah. Inflation bubble. Inflation. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, un, I'm unclear about that one. Me too. <coughs> I, it's, I, always, I always read it as being just a small amount. That's, yeah. that's just yeah. what, that's what I've, I, from the studying that I did, that's what yeah. it is. But, I mean, you know, it, you never know. Let's go $20. <laughs> and he laid hands on him. This is when you're not supposed to lay hands on people suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Same words he used. Yeah. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when the fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry. And came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said to him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. What's Jesus talking about right here? Do you remember what he's talking about? He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's talking about the kingdom. Just remind yourself of that. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, mm -hmm. even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. Tormentors. Guys, he's given us an example of what the kingdom of heaven is like. Mm -hmm. Is he sending him to hell? Mm -hmm. No, he's not. He's sending him to the tormentors. That's different than sending him to hell. Eternal damnation with fire. That's different, mm -hmm. okay? Just, I'm just giving you another example mm -hmm. of that back there when we we're talking about the hellfire, that the context is he's not talking about the lake of fire. Right. Okay. That's that's all that I was getting to this, and there was a bunch of fluff in there. And then uh, 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. What is it? What's the most important word there to me? Um, forgive. Yeah. Forgive. forgive? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, forgive is pretty pretty important. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, the word that sticks out the most is the heart. You have to be able to gauge and read your heart because you can't forgive if you right. aren't right in the heart first. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, to me, what sticks out is the heart. I'm not saying that you guys are wrong by saying the forgiveness. I'm just, that's yeah. what, that's that's just what speaks to me the most. Right. Forgive from your heart. In that your heart has to be toward God. Right. You know, Dad talks about that all the time. Our heart has to be continually for God. And if our heart is right toward God, it's easier to forgive. It's easy to do the things that Jesus told us to do and or it's easy to slip right back into repentance and get back on track where he wants us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Amen. So that was the conclusion of the kingdom of God.